What's up travelers, it's Alyssa from Means to Travel coming to you today from the Kukunoff Gardens in the Netherlands, likely the most famous flower gardens in the world. It's open for two months every year from late March to mid-May and receives around 2.5 million visitors estimated, about 26,000 visitors per day on average I've heard. And so it is a very popular destination to visit when you are here in the Netherlands. It's about 20 minute bus ride from where we're staying in Leiden and maybe a half hour bus ride from Amsterdam and a few other buses can run from city centers to the gardens each day as well. So very easy to get to from here and extremely beautiful. So today I'm going to be sharing with you all 10 tips for what to consider when you visit the Kukunov. All right, without further ado, let's just jump right in. So my first tip about when you're visiting is to definitely make sure that you are wearing all of the right gear. So this park is over 80 acres large. So you are gonna be spending at least three hours. We've already spent all day walking around here. So you wanna make sure, regardless of the weather, that you are wearing really good walking shoes. I've seen a few people walking around wearing like booties and sandals and it's just not the right shoes for all day on your feet. You're gonna be wanting to sit in every different stop, I think. So make sure that you bring shoes with good soles, waterproof shoes if it starts to rain. It does get kind of on and off rain here in the Netherlands in the springtime when the park is open. So with that said, um, if you are potentially going to experience rain while you're here, like we did for about an hour today, you are wanting to also bring rain jackets, layers, etc. So that way you are prepared for any of that spring weather. And my second tip is to make sure to either go early if you can or go late if you can. You're gonna need to book your tickets in advance and be sure to book for either earlier in the day or later in the day because that midday time frame is extremely busy here. So if you are able to choose your time frame that you're gonna come here, it's best if you want to avoid the crowds that is to come really early or come really late so that way you have a little bit more breathing room because man, it can get very crowded on those sidewalks. And speaking of avoiding the crowds, my third tip is actually to avoid coming on weekends if you can. Obviously, if you are a local in the Netherlands and you're just kind of going when you're not at work or something like that, then coming on the weekends might be the only option that you have. However, if you're like me and you're here on a trip, then booking on a weekday can help save a little bit of breathing room <laughs> when you're coming to visit. Give you a little bit more time with the flowers, that sort of thing, because this place can get really crowded on weekends. Derek and I are here on a Monday today and it is a little bit less crowded, but we're here in early May, which is that like peak bloom time. It's May 1st today. And um, there's still a ton of people here, especially in midday. It was super, super crowded walking around. And when we were trying to get food, oh my goodness, incredibly crowded. So if you can come on a weekday, definitely do it. If you can come early or come late, make sure that you plan for that. And when I mentioned before about reserving your tickets in advance, my next tip is actually similar in that vein, and that is be sure to reserve your tickets weeks in advance. And what you can do if you want to have a little bit of flexibility is book a flexible ticket that maybe you are able to cancel a few days before. I think sometimes you can cancel like four days ahead of time or even modify your time that you're going to come. So look into that when you are booking your tickets because definitely book in advance and if you feel uncomfortable with booking too far in advance that you won't necessarily know your schedule then you might have some flexibility that you can build in as well so you want to make sure you lock in that time slot and then if you can work around it later on that'll be a good thing and my next tip when you're planning your itinerary and you're in the park itself you're going to need most likely at least two and a half maybe three hours to go around and see all of the flowers and all of the flower displays outside as well as all of the indoor exhibits. So this park essentially is a big experiential moment. And so there are outdoor things to see and all the seven million flowers that the gardeners are planting and maintaining each year. And then also there's indoor things to see. So you can learn about orchids inside. You can learn about the history of tulips in the Netherlands among many other things. So you are gonna want to have many hours despite whether or not you feel like you can look at flowers for that long. There's so much to really see and experience here, food to eat, 
and make sure that you budget enough time. And that's just at the park itself. So it also takes some time to get on the bus, especially if you're not driving here, you're gonna probably take the Tulip Express or the Kukunoff Express bus. So you're gonna need time to actually wait in line to get on the bus and then when you're on the bus and when you go home, there's gonna be a lot of time built in. So you'd need at least half of a day in your itinerary. I would say a whole day if you're going to take it a little slow and really enjoy the experience here. By the way, if you're liking this video so far and finding it helpful for your upcoming trip to the Kukunoff Gardens, then definitely press that thumbs up button down below and the red subscribe button too. It really helps support the free travel content that I put out on YouTube, so thank you in advance for that. And my next tip is that if you are coming into the park, make sure to get a map when you walk in. So they have little umbrellas, little tents that say free maps when you walk in in English and there's a bucket of free maps that you can take a little map from and then plan your route around the park because that's going to be really helpful not only for navigating where you're at at any given time because sometimes the service can be really poor uh, or the Wi-Fi doesn't really work very well here. At least that's what I've experienced because there's so many people also trying to use their phones here um, at the same time. And then also you want to make sure that you can hit everything. So you might not know what you're missing if you don't have the map. So if you grab the map in advance and plan out what you're going to see, that'll make your experience all the better. And then while you're walking around the gardens, then my next tip is to make sure to stay on the designated paths. So they have a lot of roped off sections around the gardens to protect the flowers themselves. The gardeners replant a lot of these tulip bulbs every year <laughs> and they really try to do a lot to maintain the beauty that everybody is able to see. So you don't want to kind of like get up close to the flowers and take a selfie with them and end up touching them and possibly destroying them. That would be a tragedy in my personal opinion and many other people would think that as well. So you want to make sure that you stay on the designated paths. Many of them are concrete. Some of them are like wood chipped, but it's very clear what's a path and what's not. So make sure that you stay where you should be at any given time. So that way you are being a very polite and kind visitor. And my tip after that is that when you are walking around on those paths, there are lots of different stops to take. And my recommendation, and I actually learned this from another YouTube video, is when you first walk into the park, most people are really interested in going straight to the windmill and the canal because that's a really popular stop within the park. So if you save that for last, you are actually gonna be going in a different direction from a lot of the crowd and therefore maybe avoiding a lot of the people and following people in mass. So my recommendation is to turn left when you first walk into the park and go to the different stops towards the left and see the flowers over there first, which are still extremely beautiful. Um, it's definitely, you're not gonna be missing out on anything. And then work your way clockwise around the park instead of counterclockwise, like a lot of people do. That's gonna give you a lot of ability to really experience things in your own time and a little bit more space, I think. So that's my hot tip, <laughs> um, my next tip for when you visit here. And another tip that I have is is especially if you're on a budget when you're traveling here in the Netherlands, be sure to bring a refillable water bottle and some snacks here. The food here, in my opinion, is not outrageously expensive. It's not like highway robbery or anything, but it's still a lot more expensive than what you would get if you brought your own picnic lunch or snacks. So if you want to save money, then I definitely recommend bringing food with you to stave off that hunger and a refillable water bottle because there's places around the park that you can refill it and not have to buy a water bottle each stand because you're walking a lot, you might get thirsty. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely be sure to think about if you can fit that in your bag, they're not gonna like, take it away or anything when you walk in. So certainly an option for saving money, saving time, because oh my gosh, it took so long to get lunch today, by the way. Um, it was like an hour or so just to like stand in line, wait for ordering food at the, at the main stand and then finding a table to actually eat our food at and then eating, uh, it was, totally a time suck. So if you can save that time too, that would be great. So those are my tips. Consider bringing a snack and some water. And my last and final tip is that this place is dog friendly, family friendly, and mobility friendly. We have been seeing families with small children walking around the park and enjoying the day. We've been seeing lots of dog owners, dog parents with their dogs, and even a lot of people that have mobility challenges such as having walkers and wheelchairs. So it's really cool to see all of those opportunities for people of all ages and all ability levels and 
and canines to come here. The only thing that I'm going to say is because this park is so large, be sure that you are prepared if you bring your dog or your kid or something like that, that you might need to carry them or have them in a stroller. So make sure that you think about that and everybody's energy levels and walking abilities when you come visit because you don't want somebody, maybe a small kid to be really tired of walking after some time um, and maybe you can't carry them or something. So that is my tip is to make sure that you are prepared for having to carry your kids, carry your dogs, that sort of thing. Also, on top of that, I should really add that if you are bringing things with you because you're, you know, traveling around the country, such as a suitcase, there's actually, there's lockers here to store bags, but not, they're not big enough to have a suitcase. So bringing anything that you're really not sure that you can carry around an entire 80 acre park yourself would not be the right move. So be sure to think about that too. If you have luggage with you, you're not gonna be able to check it. You will literally have to have your suitcase like rolling around the park. <laughs> all right, well, I hope you guys really liked all of these tips for visiting the Kukanaw Gardens. If you have any other questions, hopefully I can try to answer them in the comments below. And also if you have any tips yourself, if you've visited before, if you are a local around here and visit a lot, then definitely put them in the comment section down below. We really love learning from each other on this channel and in this community. Also too, if you haven't already, please press that thumbs up button down below if you found this video helpful and the red subscribe button too. So that way you don't miss any of the travel tip videos, travel vlogs, and other travel videos that I have on this channel to come. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers from the Kukanoff Gardens in Les Netherlands. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Happy travels, everyone. Bye. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.